Hi, and welcome to Sundays at Journey. My name is Stephanie, and I'm going to be your host today. If you would take out your cell phones and text the word welcome to the phone number that you see in the screen, we'd just like to thank you for joining us this morning. In it, you'll find a link, and through that link, you'll be able to provide us with your name, your email address, and your phone number. Not going to use it for anything else, just to let you know that we're glad that you're joining us here, and also to let you know what's going on with Journey this month. And before we get started with a word from Pastor Mark, here's this hope with a beautiful song of worship. <laughs> Let me once again thank you so much for joining us here at Sunday's a Journey. Hey, today is Father's Day, and for all the dads that are out there, God bless you. You have an important task. You, have a, you play an important role, not only in the life of your family, but in our community, and ultimately in our nation. And that's a lot of responsibility. And so I just want to encourage you to take that role seriously, to uh, honor God with that role that you have in our community, and to be the very best father, the wisest father, the most loving father, the most nurturing father that you possibly can be for the glory of God and for the benefit of your family and especially of your children. I want to pray for you real quick because I know personally that it's a hard job. There's a lot of expectations, and there's a lot of things in our culture that would probably cause you to think, I don't know why I'm even trying to be a good dad because of the culture that we live in. But can I tell you, it is worthwhile, and I want to pray for you. So let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, for the fathers, God, across our nation, especially those who are attached to this broadcast here today, God, as we celebrate fathers, May you help the dads to honor you in that role as a father. 
May you bless them. May you give them wisdom and, and give them good discernment. And God, I pray that you would help them to be the best dads they can possibly be. And God, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to come to you with a message today. More than just for dads. This is not a, a just a dad's message. But the message I want to bring to you is actually kind of the beginning of a new series we're starting here that we're going to run through the summer. It's about our spiritual fitness core training uh, series that we're walking through, and we start that actually today. And, and we're going to talk about the importance of the Bible. And so I want to begin today by just simply asking the question, what possibly can an ancient book that was written thousands of years ago in a culture I do not understand by people who lived on the other side of the planet, and it was written in languages that I cannot read. What in the world is there for me by reading this book? I think that's an honest question. I, I think it's a question that bears looking at some answers. And I want to tell you that when we talk about what can the Bible do for me, what can the Bible do for you, I want you to know that there were an awful lot of really good answers that I wanted to share with you today, but there were really too many answers. Good answers, but too many to cover in our message today. So I want to just kind of limit some answers to you that I think are compelling for why in the world you and I would want to invest any time in reading this book. I believe that we can find those answers in the book of 2 Timothy in the New Testament, chapter 3. So I want you to join me there, if you could, just for a couple of moments. Because in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, we find some really great answers to the question, what can the Bible do for me? And I think that there are really, when we, when we read these two verses, I, I think that in the shortness of the, of the message there, in that text, I think it really kind of breaks down to two overall big questions that it answers. And the first one is this, why does the Bible matter? I mean, we've already talked about how old this book is. We, we've talked about how foreign it is, both in language and in culture. It's far removed from what you think is the life of a man or a woman or a student or a boy or a girl in the United States in 2022. And so I want to see if we can find the answer to why does the Bible even matter? And I think we find the answer for that in the opening couple of phrases of the 16th verse of chapter 3 of 2 Timothy. So let me take a moment, and I'm going to read through both verses, and then we're going to come back and talk about that. The Bible says in, first, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, all Scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. So why in the world does the Bible even matter? Well, it, it matters because of two things. We see here at the beginning of verse 16. It matters because, number one, it's God's word, and it tells us that it is profitable to me if, now here's the catch. You knew there'd be a catch, right? If you read it, and if you heed it or abide by what it says. You know, uh, if, if, if I were to want to repair something, and I were to want to go and, and get a book and I, that, that would give me a detailed instructions on how to repair something, just by buying the book and having it in my hands will not help me make my repair. I actually have to crack it open, don't I? I have to read through the step-by-step -step instructions, and I have to understand what tools I might need that it explains once I open the book and start to read it. The book by itself, if it stays closed, will never be of any help to me at all. And so the Bible says that 
that it is profitable, it, is, it matters to us because, number one, because God has given it to us. And secondly, it becomes profitable when I read it and when I heed it or abide by it. So let's take that moment, uh, just, just the, those two ideas of God giving it to us and then it becomes profitable to us. And let's just kind of narrow those down for just a moment. That first opening phrase says this, all scripture is inspired by God. Now that word inspired, that word inspired means that, that God has actually breathed it out, that it becomes part of his breath, it becomes part of his, part of his message to us. You see, God wants to communicate to you and to me in the most enduring way that he has decided to communicate to us is through his written word. Think of it as a letter that's addressed to you and to every other person on the planet. God wants us to know him. He wants you to know why he created you, that he has a purpose for you and that he's designed you in a specific way for a purpose that he intends. He wants you to understand what it means to have a relationship with him. And it also gives us an idea of how we might please him and how we might avoid trouble and difficulty in our lives. You know, we bring out a lot of our own trouble just by making poor decisions. And the Bible is full of all kinds of things that can help us to make good decisions as opposed to poor ones. So they had, God has given us this book. It is actually a collection of 66 smaller individual books. It took over 1,500 years as God the Holy Spirit moved 40 different human authors to write what God was telling them to write, God's message to his creation. And through that time period, God was giving all of humanity his word. And so the reason why it should matter to us is because God matters. He is the creator of the universe. He created you. He created me. He created all living beings and the world and the universe that we know. This sovereign creator God desires to speak to you. And he prepared his communication to you so long ago. And God has used this book for the entirety of human history so that you and I might understand about God and about what he wants to accomplish in and through your life. And so why does the Bible matter? It matters because the author is God, and God matters, and God's message to you should matter. When I used to, uh, when I was dating my wife, there was a time period between the time that I graduated from college and the time that we got engaged where she and I lived apart. Most of the, of the, of the country was separated from us. I lived in Tennessee at the time. She was living in Utah at the time. And so we would correspond. In those days, it was called mail. Letters, you know, we we would we would take paper and and a pen and and we would write things down. We I know this sounds really bad. There was no such thing as email back then. I know some of you are going to flip out. You can't believe that there was anything that, that email was always there. No, no, there wasn't. And so we would take time and we would write each other letters and put them in the mail. And when I received a letter from my dear, dear girlfriend at the time, who became my wife, I couldn't wait to open that envelope. I wanted to rip it open, and I wanted to see what words and message she had for me. Why was that piece of mail so much different than the mail that I received the same day at the same time that came from the electric company or the water company? Well, I don't think it really takes too much scrutiny to figure that out. The reason why that letter of, from Robin was so special to me is because she was special to me. And that made her letter 
special as well. And so God sent us this message. And so why should the Bible matter? Well, because God wants you to know some things. And he loves you, and he cares for you. And he took time throughout human history to convey to you his message to you and into your life. But then the, not only is the fact that the Bible matters because God matters, but then it also tells us another reason why the Bible matters at all. Because it becomes profitable to you. It's profitable. When you read it and you abide by it or heed what it says, it becomes profitable. That's what the second phrase is there. It says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. The Bible is profitable to you. The Bible is profitable to me. Perhaps to be really practical about it, it is profitable to those who read it and abide by it. So how can the Bible be profitable to you? Well, it enumerates for us, it lists for us at least four ways in which it's valuable to you if you read it and abide by it. The first thing is, is that it teaches. It's instructing believers in God's truth. Maybe you could put it a different way. You could put it like this. It tells us what is right. You know, uh, when, my, when my dad and, and I would get together when I was a young boy, he would teach me how to fish. And he would teach me how to cast my net or not my net, but my line, my fishing line, my lure, or a, or a worm on a hook. He would teach me how was the right way to cast and what was the wrong way to cast. And so the Bible begins by saying it becomes profitable to you because it teaches you what is right, the right way to live. Elsewhere in the Bible, Paul uses the same word when it says teaches there. It says here, in, um, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14, listen to these words. It says here, as a result, we are no longer children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness in deceitful scheming. You see, this instruction here illustrates for us that the truths that God teaches or the doctrines that the Bible teaches in, in the scriptures can profit you if you read them and if you heed them. In other words, what it says is that you can avoid all of the craziness in life and you can cut right to the chase and you can go right to the place where you need to go if you will simply in your life abide by its teaching. But not only does it teach us what is right, but it also then comes along and gives us some other help. It becomes profitable when we get off track. It lets us know that we're off course. It, the Bible says in this verse, it reproves. Now, that might be a word you don't use too often. But what that simply means is it rebukes. It, 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 it challenges. It, it, it's almost kind of like a slap in the face, if you will, verbally. And it says, hey, hey, wake up. You're going the wrong way. Another way you could put this is just simply, it teaches us what is not right. Earlier, Paul, in his writings, in the first book of Timothy, chapter 5, verse 20, says this. It says, those who continue in sin, in other words, doing opposite of what God wants you to do, rebuke in the presence of all so that the rest also will be fearful of sinning. So God's word not only teaches you what is right, but when you get off course, it also provides for you the alert. It's kind of like the, the, the idiot lights on your car's dashboard. It, it starts to flash when there's danger, when there's something wrong, when your car is about to blow up because you don't have any oil in the motor. Okay, And so that, that bleaking light, the, 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 the sound of the beeper because you don't have a door shut securely and you don't want a passenger falling out of your car, that, that's because there's something wrong going on there and it needs to help you be alerted so you can fix it. And so the Bible is there to teach you what is right. It teaches you also that you've done something wrong, but not only does it leave you there, but the third way that it benefits you is that it corrects. 
it corrects. It, it, it corrects those who have gone astray or those that are in error. Another way to put it is simply how to get right. If, if you've gone wrong, how do you get back on the right path? That's another thing that the Bible can do to bring a help to you in your life. You see, when we blow it, when we fail to follow God's word and we stumble and we fall into sin, God's word helps us to get into the right place again with God and with God's people. And the benefit is all about being restored and back on track. I want to share with you a little story as we consider these first three benefits it brings to you. A number of years ago, my wife and I, along with our oldest daughter, who was just a small infant at the time, were embarking on a weekend trip to go see some friends of ours and stay with them down in Alabama. We lived in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and they lived just on the north side of Montgomery. And I wasn't really feeling too well. I, I'd gotten off of work. It was a Friday late afternoon, and, and we were just kind of pulling some things together, and we were going to grab a quick little bite to eat, and we were going to get on the interstate, and we were going to head for the weekend down to Montgomery, Alabama. And if you look at the map, most of the maps will take you, yeah, again, again, we looked at maps. We didn't have GPS in those days. Uh, we looked at the map, and, and what the map really shows is that you, you, you take and go from Chattanooga down, to, you're heading to Birmingham. And before you get into Birmingham, you can veer off the interstate, and you take one of those round uh, uh, paths that goes around a lot of metropolitan cities, a bypass, if you will. And you take the bypass, and it puts you onto a different interstate that takes you from Birmingham down to Montgomery. And so we started off, and we were on the right path. The, 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 the atlas, the, the map was showing us what was the right path to go in. But the problem is that Mark forgot the atlas. And I said, as most guys would say, well, that's okay. Uh, we're not going to go back and get it. Uh, we've been down there before. I, I, I can remember how to get there. Oh, Oh, how no, that, that, was, that was not the right answer. But that's what we did. So we're going down the road. And we're going, and we're going, and we're going. And, and, and it's getting late into the evening. It's a Friday night uh, in the fall. And um, it, it just seems like we're really, really going a lot further than I thought it was going to take. And, and we were spending a lot of time on the road. And so I decided to humble myself and, and pull off at an exit and go to a trucker stop. There was a truck stop there with fuel and a restaurant and everything. And so I got out of the car. I left my wife and my young infant daughter in the car. And, and I went inside. And in those days, when you went to a, a truck stop, if you would see this large road map that was behind plexiglass. And it would oftentimes indicate on the map, it would have highlighted or, or somebody would take a big red uh, pen and would circle uh, where that location was that you happened to be at on the map. And so I walked inside and I found the map on the wall behind the plexiglass and I looked and I was looking over at one side of Alabama and uh, where Montgomery was and I didn't see any indication that that's where we were. And as I glanced a little closer at the map, I saw that instead of being in the in the southeast corner of Alabama, we were in the southwest corner of Alabama. Matter of fact, we were so far off course that we were about to cross over from Alabama into Mississippi. That's how far off track we had gotten. And so what that map did on, on, that, on that wall in that truck stop was it did a couple of things. It Number one, it reproved me. It rebuked me. It, it said, listen, you're on the wrong road. You, you missed the road that you were going to turn on long, long time ago. And by studying the map, I was able to figure out how to go from where we were to where we wanted to be. And so it not only showed me that I, my error, my mistake, but it also showed me how I can get back on the right track. The Bible can do that for you. It can do that for you in your life. And so the Bible teaches. The Bible reproves. The Bible corrects. But lastly, it trains. 
It trains. It, it guides believers into God's ways. Another way you would put that is how to stay right. How to stay right. Scripture, you see, is a primary resource for teaching persistently the acts and habits that will reflect God's own character, his righteousness, in relationship with his people. And so God's word matters. It matters because it's God's letter to you. It matters because it's profitable to you for these four different things. But beyond the fact that the Bible matters, when we look at the second verse, verse 17, here's what we find. We find what the Bible can do for you. What the Bible can do for you. Let me read verse 17. It says there, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. You see, God's word makes you complete. It makes you capable. It makes you proficient to meet the demands of life and equips you to do good work for God's kingdom. Now, I don't want you to get mixed up with that word adequate. A lot of times when I think about the word adequate, it means barely scrapes by. Maybe that's how you look at the word adequate. But from an insurance perspective, adequate is actually a very good thing. When you talk to your insurance agent about the level of care or coverage you have for your car, your home, for your life, uh, maybe for medical insurance, for, your, for caring for your medical expenses, having the gold standard the gold standard for that is to be adequately covered. Here's what it means in insurance. It means not to have too little, but not to have too much coverage. You are adequately covered. In other words, you are, you, are, you are in a good sweet spot. So think about that when it comes to what the Bible says. The Bible says that God has given to you his word so that you will be in a sweet spot. You will be adequately covered. You won't have too little, and you won't have way too much that you can't use. It, you will become adequate for the work that God intends for you to accomplish in your life. You see, by reading the Bible and heeding the Bible, you become into a part of your life where you get all that you need to accomplish all that God wants you to accomplish. It is that profitable. It is that helpful to you and to me. Throughout human history, God's word, the Bible, can do all of that and so much more. Here at Journey Church, we believe that it is so important for you to understand how to utilize this powerful tool, this life tool called the Bible, that we are incorporating that into our summer 2022 spiritual fitness core training. And we're going to begin to do that and talk about how we can maximize this tool to impact our lives positively. And I want to take a moment and invite you to take this powerful tool, this communication that God has given to you, to use it to its maximum benefit in your life and in the life of your family. And the best way that I can do that is to invite you to join with us. Throughout this summer, we're going to begin talking tomorrow night about some ways that you can really pull some pearls, some great, great pieces of wisdom and understanding from this book that's going to make your life better. And so how you can do that is simply get out your phone right now. And I, what I want you to do is I want you to text the one word fitness, 
F-I-T-N-E-S-S, fitness. And I want you to send that one word text message to the phone number that you find on the screen right now. And as soon as you hit send, almost immediately, we're going to respond right back to you with a link. And if you'll tap on that link, you'll be able, from that link, you'll be able to register free of charge. We want to provide for you lots of great opportunities to strengthen your spiritual core this summer. And it begins by getting a better grip of this book and taking advantage of what it can bring to your life this summer. And so I hope you'll do that. Again, the, the one word message is the word fitness to the, to the phone number that's on the screen. Will you do that? Will you do that right now? We would love to have you join us for this summer special series. Let me have a word of prayer with you if I could. Dear Heavenly Father, for the men, the women, the boys and girls, the students who are watching our broadcast today, God, I pray that they will have, have understood that there is power for them, help for them out of the Bible. And God, help us at Journey Church to tap into that power and to help our friends to have a stronger, better life through the use of reading and studying and applying the principles, God, that you've put here. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. My friends, Thank you so much for joining us here at Sunday's a Journey. As always, I want to end by simply inviting you to an in-person experience on a Sunday morning here at our worship center in Wesley Chapel, Florida. The best way for me to communicate a lot of information to you is to simply invite you to go to our website. It's journeychurch.us. That's journeychurch.us. You'll find out all kinds of information about where we're located, service times, ministry opportunities. You'll also be able to actually plan your first visit with us right there on our website. I hope you'll stop by and, and take a look at it. Until next time, the next time that we get together, my prayer is God's blessings and his grace 